Um, which way? I don't know. Oh no. No, I definitely did not come through here. one I'm going now that one lies the furthest into the jungle and I think it's the least visited well I think nobody actually goes there <laughs> Bienvenidos welcome to the archaeological site Nakum I made it, I made it. Look at the state of Alaska. Look at all this. <laughs> oh man. What did I do to you, hey? Okay, I've made it to the site. There is not a single soul around. The only person here. Let's find the ruins now. Oh, I think that's... <laughs> There's a pyramid there. I would always would not notice it because it's completely overgrown. But that here is a pyramid.
This is the Acropolis, Acropolis, the palace right in front of me. Uh, I did not expect this. Yeah, just behind me is not a pyramid, but that's more covered. But if I walk up there. Man, this is steep. Oh, I can. Oh, I hear bats. Oh, <laughs> there are bats in there. Man, this place is big, and everywhere hidden in between the jungle, there are these half uncovered temples and pyramids of an ancient Mayan civilization. How cool is this? What a place! See, there's another one. Okay, I have climbed to the highest pyramid here. I'm just gonna look for an area in the shade to show you something. So this is the view from the pyramid. You can see the structures down below and then just endless jungle. That's a great view on that structure there. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is that in the place that I'm staying, they have a lot of books about all the mine sites in the area. And I took some pictures of the kind of the map of this place to understand what is what and which is where and that sort of thing. I don't know how well you can see this, but this is the map. So this is the South Acropolis, the palace. Then there's a causeway and then this is the northern part. And then this, I don't know, you may, probably cannot even see this, but this is the building where I just entered. The first building that I saw with the three things on top, that's uh, that one. So the Nakum site, and actually they don't even know if Nakum is the original name for this place. But anyway, that's a different story. So this place, Nakum, has an early settlement history, which dates back to the early pre-classic. Uh, which is between 800 and 300 years BC. And because of the location of this site close to the river, uh, it has throughout history been an, a very important trade uh, site. So the site consists of two main groups which are connected via the causeway. But additionally, there have been 36 other structures identified nearby. And they have done quite a lot of restoration or at least clearing the site of all the overgrown jungle pretty much. But not everything is cleared. So you can see, you know, structures like this, which are still pretty overgrown, which they are slowly kind of bringing back to life. And the area that I am now, that was the main central plaza of the place. And a lot of the structures are built around that plaza. And some of these structures were built for stargazing and studying the astronomical calendar. <laughs> Look at this. to the top of this pyramid. Maybe not. <laughs> there are a few steps down here. But up here it's all overgrown. I don't know if I can get to the top there. Maybe try from that side. And another thing that makes Nakum famous is that they discovered a lot of pre-Columbian graffiti here. So they have found some incredible wall paintings of uh, macaws, so the big, the big parrots that occur in this jungle. But I believe a lot of it is, is destroyed. Um, there has been a lot of looting around here, unfortunately. So looters have taken statues and destroyed things. Yeah, I cannot climb up to this. I don't know how to get to the top. Anyway, archaeologists can tell that the style of the buildings here indicates that there was a strong connection between Nakum and Tikal, the main Mayan city in the, in the area here. So civilization here in Nakum 
extended to flourish until around the 9th century and then it got abandoned like a lot of other Mayan sites around here and I don't know why it got abandoned but it got abandoned and this great civilization was just left behind like it was never there and then the jungle took over and it was only rediscovered in 1905 by a French French explorer who stumbled upon this site. Oh, what's this? Small building. I don't know what this was used for. I just can't over the fact that there used to be a civilization, an ancient Mayan civilization of thousands of people living here remotely in the jungle, building these incredible stone pyramids and structures. It's, it's unbelievable. Don't ask me how I got here. I just climbed up another steep jungle hill. Um, I can't find the path. But this, I'm now standing on another pyramid. And this is the northern part of the city of, well, of Nakum. And See, this is the top of the pyramid, but look how high I am. <laughs> the jungle is all the way down there. And I was actually looking for the causeway, or Sakbe in Mayan language, which literally translates as white road. But that word is used to indicate any kind of elevated road. And that's a Sakbe. And there's one supposedly running from the southern Acropolis, where I was before, to the northern part. But I can't see it. I, I would expect it to be running somewhere there. But I don't see anything. Oh, I see it's jungle everywhere. So I'm not too sure about this thing. Maybe I'll just go back where I came from now. It's, it's very steep here. <laughs> Very steep and nothing much to hold on to. You can clearly see the remains of another pyramid sticking out here at the top. But I need to go back somewhere all the way down there. I don't know which part was harder to get here or then to actually find the temples and the pyramids and also there are snakes everywhere in this jungle as well and I've changed from my riding boots I brought uh, walking shoes so I didn't have to walk in my boots but when it comes to snakes it's probably better to wear like high riding boots anyway no snakes that's good. It just really fascinates me that in 2022, so much of the old civilizations that, that thrived in this area, that so much is still uncovered. I mean, I get it, like the logistics to even come here and do research and restore and uncover. It's a humongous task. All right. I am going to make my way back through this jungle because <laughs> it's still a long way back it's at least uh, two hours 
of uh, struggling through mud to get back. And well, you don't want to be caught out here in the dark. That is, is a very bad scenario. I think I can get through here. Now you have to ride like on the far edges because otherwise it's too wet. How did I do that one? Did I come through there? I think I did. Now look at this, maybe I go straight. Yeah, I think I came through here. Maybe not. Oh no. No, I definitely did not come through here. Uh, I'm gonna turn around because I don't know where this is going. come through there I must have gone through this stuff somehow how did I pass this oh probably that one yeah, I went through here I can see my tracks here Take that one. There's another one there. I'm gonna have a look before I get myself into something. Maybe I can just pass here. took this one through here not that <laughs> although this is a bit tight but it will work definitely not gonna go through there that's a disaster Definitely no. 
never ridden like this in the jungle. This is a first to ride through a jungle like this for such a long distance. I am back at the place of doom. There on the left, that's where I uh, got stuck and struggled for, I think I, I struggled for half an hour, 30 minutes straight. <sighs> Should have gone here. <laughs> ah well, now I know. to it, eh? just goes on and on and on. Ooh. Mud pit after mud pit. So there. Then I didn't. Okay. Look at that. Little piece of art. Oh man. I got stuck again. I don't think I have to say more if you look at well, the mud is in my hair. I didn't even film the whole thing. I was like, I'm done with also worrying about the camera. I need to get my bike out. That was that was harder than the first one. And so unnecessary. I I could have seen that that was a mud pit. But I thought it would be fine. But I just sank immediately. And it was really hard to get out. I couldn't move Alaska on the ground because the mud was so sticky. Even on the ground, the bike was just kind of glued on the ground. So I collected a lot of sticks. And after three attempts that did the trick, <sighs> this is hardcore. This is really hardcore, man. <sighs> Let's go. My tires are now, of course, completely full with mud. So I have to get rid of that while riding. But then, yeah, rocks are good for that. Going fast over rocks. But then I must also stay focused on avoiding mud. Which way? I don't know. I think I'll go here. to the left. After today, you may call me Itchy Boots, the frying clutches. 
oh my clutch got a beating today but yeah there is no other way when you're with a riding buddy you can help push each other out but if you're alone at some point that clutch is gonna go but anyway it's still working so. close to uh, Yakscha and from there the road becomes just normal kind of so I think by the time I'm back it will be an hour and 45 minutes back so it's a little bit faster than on the way up but again I think I wrestled the bike yeah I think maybe 30 minutes in that mud pit again 20 or 30 minutes I think Unreal. This is uh, the path to Yakshra. So now I don't have to worry about any mud anymore. I also hear a squeaking sound. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Probably a lot of mud stuck everywhere. I need to wash Alaska, but I don't think I can do that here. I don't have to wait. But uh, I think I should wash her before I try to cross the border into Belize. Because I look like I just popped out of the jungle from somewhere. I look absolutely savage. So I just rode Alaska back, kind of to the main road. And there's a, a washing place here. She really needs to wash because, yeah, it is <laughs> the state of Alaska. I've never seen it like this. Look at this. This is all very, very filthy. Loads of mud. These are howler monkeys. They also do this at three in the morning. <laughs> oh. oh yeah, I see them now. They're over there in a the tree. You see there's one sitting there. There's I think one there. And there's a few more sitting there. And there's some calling from that tree as well. They're calling to each other, I think. You see? It's them. And then they respond. So my plan was to, after my visit to Nakum, have a look at the uh, Yakshra site, which is uh, very close from here. But as you can probably imagine, I couldn't do that yesterday anymore. I was so completely broken when I came back here. So I decided to come today um, because, well, compared to uh, yesterday's ordeal, these ruins are a lot easier <laughs> to reach. I'm just going to take the boat. So I'm staying here at the lodge right at the lake. Ah, here you see the sign. This is a uh, real. It says uh, Cocodrilo Peligro, which means uh, danger crocodiles because this lake is not for swimming. It is full with crocodiles. I'll just take the boat. Look at this lake. So I don't know how well you can see this, if you can see the color of the water, but this lake is, has the same name as the site that I'm going to, Yakshra. And Yak means green and Shra, no, Yaks, 
is green and Kha means water. Anyway, this means green water. And this ancient mine city was built right here at the edge of the lake. So these steps that I'm climbing on now are new, but the original ones are buried somewhere underneath here. So this was actually also, in the old days, this was the place where people would have access towards the city of Yakshra. So you have to climb up <laughs> all the way to the top there. So Yakshra was built 600 years BC, a few hundred years after Tikal, the main biggest Mayan city in this area. But this place flourished most around the 8th century and it is estimated that around that time 25,000 people were living here and there are 500 structures found here which are all residential places, palaces and temples. And some of these temples here, same as in Akum, were built to study astronomical events like the solstices and the equinoxes. I've now climbed to the highest temple of the North Acropolis. You see I'm standing on a little platform and you can just overlook the jungle. You hear all the howler monkeys again. to climb the highest temple around here which is 30 meters high and from there I'll have a really nice view over the lake and I want to see the sunset. Again, I'm now right at the lakeside. It's a stunning sunset, look at this. I'm just going to wait for the boats to come pick me up. That was it for today. Wow, a lot of adventures to be had in this part of Guatemala. I'm not gonna lie, my entire body hurts from struggling and fighting this motorcycle through the mud uh, yesterday to Nakum. <laughs> I think I'll have muscle pain for the next coming days. Um, but what an adventure and I think, yeah, if you've seen something like that, it's really hard to top that, you know. It's just, I think, the whole thing, probably these ruins and the ruins in Tikal are more impressive than the ones that I found in Nakum, but just yeah, the fact that it's so hard to reach and that I had to struggle so much and then being the only person in the middle of the jungle yeah, that, that's just nothing beats that, you know just nothing beats that and um, yeah, what an experience, absolutely loved it um, so yeah, that was a good way I think to end my stay in Gorsamala um, I've had some proper adventures if I think about it if I think back of the volcano which was hardcore and then the police escort and then the whole search in the mountains to find the Ishil people that I was looking for it, it really wow unforgettable really unforgettable adventures in Guatemala again um, same like 10 years ago in a way that I also really loved Guatemala back then and now I again had amazing experiences met some amazing new people so yeah, it's time to go to Belize. So in the next video, I'm going to cross the border into Belize 
and uh, we'll see what we find there um, so that was it for today I really hope you liked this video if you did please give me a big thumbs up subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video